I'm Dot Tilbury and I'm the organiser of the NSC Cycling League. In 1992 we started and it was just after they developed the sports centre as it is today and two lads from the Manx Viking Wheelers, John Purvis and Alec Forrest, had taken it to the CA to say wouldn't it be a good idea to have some more children cycling like we used to have. Nobody was really interested at the time so John and Alec started it and I went down with my husband Nat and it was Mike Nicholson and Terry Quayle, a few of us, and Martin Wasley, and we all went down. It was a very small number on the first week. There were 14 children. The ages ranged from about five up to 16. In 1994, Scottish Provident, as it was then, Sandra Miller was coming down to the cycling with her children. Our entry had grown up to 39 children. So Sandra said, would you like me to ask at Scottish Provident to see if they would sponsor? Straight away, Scottish Provident sort of said, yes, they'd love to sponsor us. So, you know, and here we are today, well, 30 years later, and we're still with the same company. When Mark sort of was in his heyday of the Tour de France, where he was winning, you know, stages for fun, that year, we signed on 672 riders, which was amazing, absolutely amazing. You know, everybody was affected by COVID and we had to start all over again. And last year was our first full year and we had 370. And this year we've just finished and we had 500s. Mark Cavendish has been pivotal in the success of Isle of Man Cycling. You know, besides, well, of course, we have Peter Kenyuk and Johnny Bellis. And at the moment, we've got Matty Bostock, the Zoni Boys, the Lizzie Holden, Anna Christian, Amelia Sharp. I could go on and on. They're just doing so well. You know, that there's been, for the size of the island and our population, the rate per you know, real top cyclist is quite staggering, I would say. And British Cycling have often said to me that the best kids to take away are the Manx kids, because what we do to them is we go down the boat at six o'clock in the morning to get the boat to Liverpool. We put them on the boat, it's rough, a few of them are sick, and then we get off the boat, go to a race and say, right, get on your bike now. <laughs> and so they end up, they're quite tough and resilient. And it's all because we, I reckon it's that bit of sea in the middle. Well, Mark came down to us when he was nine. But his whole outlook on life was that he was going to be a racing cyclist. He always had that determination. He didn't like to lose. He had the whole package. You know, sometimes there's about three things that you need talent, you need a brain to work out how it's, um, how the race is going to turn out and change tactics if it doesn't go your way and also you need sort of the determination and the work ethic and he's actually got all three when he won the world championships i understand he'd been targeting that because it's his type of course you know this is mark's big race we just watched it and he came off mm. there he is bloke from the island had won the world championships um, and you just think, God, you know, they reached down the NSC and, you know, they did a bit of BMX and, and then he, he ends up being world champion and it's just awesome. I've been there for 30 years, so we're constant. Every Tuesday night, we're there. Every Tuesday night, the parents turn up, they go to their marshalling points. We've never changed, we've never let anybody down. We've always, you know, if they turn up, we're there. And the other thing that is sort of pivotal, we really don't charge very much on a Tuesday night for everybody because we get lots of families. And if you've got to pay, I don't know, £10 a night or something to for the privilege of riding around the NSC and you've got four kids, that's £40, so we've kept it 
really very cheap, so anybody can afford to do it. We were always out playing, which I think is missing now because people, you know, for different reasons, but, um, and of course the dread of phones, but we were never in. I wanted to be dead sporty, but I was never in the top range. My family have been very involved in things. But I was always joining things and it's a family thing. And I think what it is when you're at an AGM and you know, right, we're voting for secretary and you know he puts their hand up. Oh, go on, I'll do it then. And um, it's not through having any idea of becoming chairman. It's just if nobody will do it. Oh, go on then, I'll do it. It's because we don't like to see things falling apart. Sometimes in life, things can exasperate you. But then I'm quite an optimistic person and I'm very good at brush, not brushing things off, but I sort things out if something's not right or you know you have a problem. I, I don't sort of dwell on it. I sort of think, let's get to the bottom of this and we'll start. And once it's out of the way, then you can crack on. And to be honest, I've had support from such wonderful people. So it hasn't been a one-man band, but my husband, Nat, he's the backroom boy. He does all the accounts and the administration and sort of keeps everything, keeps me in check, first of all, which is a bit of a job. And then um, he does all the, what I would call mundane things that have got to be done. I'll be honest, I was, I was shocked, absolutely shocked. Um, and I put the envelope on the mantelpiece and I just sort of put it out of my mind. I couldn't quite get my head around it. And then that said to me, do you know, somebody's gone to a lot of trouble to get MBE awarded to you. I said, I know, but I didn't do it for that. People like me don't get the MBE. And then when he sort of said that, I thought, oh, and I sort of embraced it then.